2023 just might bring some challenges, but we can prepare for it. Hey, Provider Preppers, I'm Jonathan. And I'm Kyleen. And can you believe it? It's 2023. Now, we've all been through a couple of really rough years. And quite frankly, I don't think that the worst is behind us. I think that we have some pretty hefty challenges in front of us. However, there's great reason to hope if we just take a little bit of time and be prepared. Absolutely. We can take steps to make sure that we're even more prepared by the end of this year than we have been in the past. And of course, the first thing we need to do is evaluate our risks. And we all have a little bit different situations. So evaluate your risks and figure out what it is that you need to prepare for. Now, as Jonathan and I were looking at our risks, we have some unique um, new risks for us. One of it is that we're aging. We're getting older. And because of that, we have health challenges. I have some mobility challenges. And those are just a few of the risks that we need to take into account as we develop our goals. We've got economic instability, we've got natural disasters, we've got armed conflicts all over the world now, and um, we've got food shortages and supply shortages in general. So there are some definitely some risks that we need to factor in as we create our goals. Now, there are two questions that I would really like you to consider as you prepare your goals this year. The first one is, am I prepared to die? And the second one is, am I prepared to live? Now, I know Jonathan, when I said I was going to do that, he's like, what? But, but let's think about it for a second. Yeah. Am I prepared to die? Do I have my affairs in order? So if I were to die this year, do I, do we have everything in order so that um, our insurance is there? John knows where important documents are because we kind of divide responsibilities between us. And sometimes that means that when one spouse dies, the other one is left in a lurch because you don't know where things right. are. And quite frankly, the mortality rate across the globe has significantly increased. And so our chances of dying are greater than they have. Well, our chance of dying is 100%. It has always been 100%, but our chance of dying sooner is greater. But then the second question is, am I prepared to live? I like that one better. <laughs> okay, let's, you can like let's that. Let's focus on this one. Do I have the things that I need to, to have or to know in order to live well, regardless of what is happening in the world around me. And I truly believe that we can, as long as we have taken certain steps and are prepared. So as you develop your goals, think about, am I prepared to die? And am I prepared to live? Now, we have developed our own goals and these are personal to us, um, but some of them might be things that you should consider also, or that you might want to consider also. The first one, is to organize critical documents. And this has to do with, are you prepared to die now? We have an entire video on that. I have done a really good job actually of organizing our she critical has. documents, but quite th frankly, things change, right? All the time. And so we really need to update this and make sure what's going on. So I have um, this nice binder that has all of our critical documents in it. And one of my goals is to go through and make sure that that's all, all taken care of. Um, another goal that I have is to make a backup copy of all of our photos and our memories. And for Christmas, I bought John a new safe from a scratch and dent sale. Um, and so I'm really excited about that. But one of my goals is, I get, okay, I gave him the safe so that I could use it. How <laughs> fair is that? Hey, it works for me. <laughs> but I want a copy of our, my memories and my pictures so that no matter what happens, whether my house burns down or whatever, I have another copy in that safe. So. That's what, that's goal number one. All right. Goal number two, and this one's focused mostly on me is <laughs> it's time to declutter and de-junk. It's time to get rid of a bunch of stuff. Now I am a prepper. And so sometimes the mentality that comes with prepping is, okay, I might need that in the future. I may not be able to get that. Um, and there's always a balance in there, but we have to decide what is it that we need to keep? What is it we need to junk? And, and so we're going to go through and we're going to de-junk everything that we have and then put everything in order so that we can find it. Because if you can't find it, it's just as good as not having it. And I, 
I've dealt with that a few times. I know I've got this tool, but if I can't find it, it's just frustration. So that's a big one for us. So um, number three is to evaluate our preps um, and our prep skills, right? And this is something that we work on all the time, right? We want to know where we are, but we're going to take pretty seriously some things like, okay, our heating devices. What are we going to do to heat in the event of an emergency? We have all kinds of things in place, right? But uh, my wife doesn't like to be cold. So. I don't like the fires really feeling good. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, but so are the chimneys clean for for the wood burning stove, right? We have this fantastic masonry heater and um, we need to practice with that some more because we've only used it, you know, a handful of times and we need to use that more because we, we've got to up those skills and know. And then do we have enough fuel stored, right? Do we have what we need to cook in a power outage or long-term or short-term? And in fact, I'm actually writing a book on that right now, just about the emergency cooking. So you can look forward to that. But um, I think that's really important for us to make sure that we've checked our preps and our skills. Okay, number four is going through our water storage. We're gonna rotate out again. Um, I don't think we have to do that every six months, but it should be done periodically and just making sure everything is in order. I've got the rainwater system almost finely tuned, but we need to finish fine tuning that. It's, it's working extremely well, but water is so important. So um, make sure we cover that one. Yeah. Okay. And then another thing that we're going to do is I've got to go through all my food storage. I've got to make sure that I inventory it, that I know what we have, that we are rotating through it regularly. And I have some food in there that quite frankly, our diets have changed and we are not eating. And so now is a good time for us to share that food, right? Take it to a food bank or share it with neighbors or somebody who would want to eat that food because we, we have such a small space in our home. We want to make sure that the food that we have is the food that we are going to be able to eat. Number six is to improve our food production capability. Now we're doing pretty well but we want it to be even better. Our ability to produce our own food is so important. And so we're gonna make some real progress in that area. Um, I've got some great ideas, A-frames for our garden beds and some other things. Mama's also got some great ideas. It's gonna be the best year yet, most productive garden yet. Right now, if I could encourage you guys to get your seeds, this is such an important time to make sure that you have all the seeds that you need. Um, survival garden seeds. Um, I definitely, if you're looking for inexpensive heirloom seeds that you can just buy in a kit, survival garden seeds, they are awesome. Um, I did, I, I bought a seed packet from Johnny's and it was, oh, I sh don't tell him cause he'll be upset I bought it, but one was $5 and one was $6 <laughs> for a seed packet. And these aren't even big seed packets. They have like 30 seeds in them. Now Johnny's is a great place to get seeds, but the ones from survival garden seeds, I can get this huge variety and they end up being about a dollar a packet. And so cost effectively, that's really, that's really good for me. I'm going to expand our food forest, um, food forest or perennial areas where they just grow back year after year and they get better every year because that way you don't have to be dependent on planting everything that year. And there's a great need for both of those, but food forest is definitely on my list. And then I am, building another new raspberry bed. And then number seven is I'm gonna expand my herbal um, and my medicinal skills and resources. So I'm gonna plant more medicinal plants. I'm gonna work on um, building a better library that has more of the books that I need. I think my prepper library and books that I actually open and I can reference are really important. But the whole herbal thing, I think it's important that I'm able to take care of my family and my health, no matter what happens to the supply system. And one of the great things about growing um, medicinal herbs is that most of them kind of grow like weeds. And so I can incorporate them into my food forest and into my regular garden. And it's just a win-win, win-win-win. Absolutely. Number eight is building relationships. And if you know us, you know that community is central on our minds. Um, we are not prepared unless our neighbors are prepared also. So we're going to do an even better job this year of getting to know our neighbors, building new relationships, um, becoming closer with our family, um, strengthening relationships. These relationships are so important and they carry us through the really hard times. 
And that's another thing with the prepare to die. Um, if I were to die this year, how, how's my relationship with my family? What are, the, what are my grandchildren gonna remember about grandma? Are there things that I need to um, set aside so that I have more time to spend with my family? Um, I think that's really important. Um, another relationship that I need to make sure that I'm square with is my relationship with God. If I were to die this year, am I okay that this earth life is over and it's my turn to, to talk to God and to report on what I've done in this life? And so for me, um, that's another relationship that I need to make sure that I'm working on really hard. And number nine is home security. So the world is getting out of control. And we have made a lot of improvements to our home to secure it and make it um, more secure. But I think that right now would be a good time to evaluate the security of our home again. We've been putting off doing some things because it was expensive. Um, for instance, a security door on our front door. I would really, really like that so that when I am opening my front door, I have a boundary between me and whoever is there. Um, I, so for me, I think that that's really important and we need to work on some of those things. Um, of course, planting more thorny bushes around the perimeter of my property, just to make sure people know that they're not invited that way. And so John, you're going to have to do a lot of that. I'll decide okay. what things we need done and you can do that. I'm the muscles. Okay. And the safe was part of that too, right? Um, making sure that if somebody breaks into our home, whatever it is that they're looking for, well, we don't have a whole lot of valuable stuff in our home, though. I mean, the people are what's valuable in our home. We don't have much of, of great value anyway, but um, everything's secured. So that's another thought. So there are some of our goals, and we hope that you will think about the things that are important to you. Go through your family preparedness plan. Pick some things that are important for you that are going to make a huge difference in you being more prepared for whatever comes in our future. And think about those questions while you do it. Are you prepared to die? And are you prepared to live? Another thing that we want to do is provide lots of good information for you. That is our mission. That is our goal, is to provide you with good information so that you can make great progress on this path in 2023. So now the question of the day. What are your urgent goals and priorities for this coming year? Comment below, and there's going to be some stimulating thought going on as we help each other remember some of the things that maybe we can get done this year. So thanks for being part of the solution.